Hi everyone, it's Anthony with AJK Beauty. Finally back with another video. It has been literal months since the last time I posted a video. Um, you know, things get crazy right around fall um, time with work and then um, a bunch of new activities that I've started have taken up some time and actually um, about a month ago, maybe a little over a month ago, I recorded a super long Get Unready video with me that featured all Youth to the People products. I was doing a full brand review of Youth to the People at that time, and I got it all finished, um, it all recorded, and I record all of this stuff on my phone, and I typically use my Android, which I'm using now, my Samsung, but that at that moment I had just gotten a new iPhone, so I was like, oh, I'll use the new iPhone, and it it just crashed it like deleted the majority of the video the ending got completely cut off so I was like super frustrated and since then uh, just a bunch of other things have um, been coming up so I just haven't had a chance to do a video in quite some time so I'm super excited to be back just before the end of the new year um, this will go up on New Year's Eve so um, I wanted to do another get unready video um, or, you know, get and ready with me video, uh, just to kind of cover what I'm using now because um, I have moved on from a majority of the Youth to the, to the People products. I finished up a lot of them, um, you know, early to um, late, you know, pretty much early December is when I finished them. And so I've transitioned to a lot of new products. Um, I've uh, transitioned out of um, quite a few K-Beauty products as well and moved into some more natural skincare, some US-based, uh, products. I have some stuff, uh, you know, still K-Beauty. I have a couple things from Youth to the People so and some stuff that's local to Colorado. So um, I think right now my routine is kind of the most varied and um, has, you know, just has so many different products from different places and different styles that I was, I just had to stop what I was doing and say, okay, I have to share this routine because I'm really happy with it right now um, for the most part. Um, some of it's new, some of it I've had um, for quite some time. So um, I wanted to take an opportunity to really dive in and talk about what I'm using currently. So um, I'm gonna start by going over the oil cleanser that I'm using right now and um, do that oil cleanse. And then I'm gonna hop in the shower. Um, actually, you know what? I might just move right onto my water-based cleanser because there's a mask that I'm gonna rinse off in the shower. So, um, so yeah, let me um, start you off with just diving right in with my oil cleanser. There's quite a, a few products to get through, so I'll try to, I'm, I'm always long-winded, but I'll try to um, get through them as quickly as possible and then provide all the links for pricing, where to buy all of that stuff down below so you'll have that as well. So um, the oil cleanser that I'm using right now, I only use an oil cleanser in the evening. I don't wear makeup, but I do wear sunscreen. So I always like to make sure that I get that completely removed with a nice oil cleanser. And um, I am using, um, everything's gonna be in reverse because I'm using my front facing camera, but this is the Little Barn Apothecary Blue Yarrow Plus Geranium Cleansing Oil. Um, this is a straight up oil. A lot of oil cleansers will have an emollient, or I'm sorry, an emulsifying ingredient so when you rinse it, it kind of turns that milky white and is a little bit more watery and easy to get off the skin. I've moved more towards um, some more, you know, clean beauty or all natural products. So this literally just has um, coconut oil, blue yarrow um, oil, um, organic geranium, and a couple other oils in it as well. I think there might be some jojoba in here and some squalane potentially. Um, I'll leave that link to the site. Um, I picked this up on in um, at Ulta, at my local Ulta, for around, I want to say 30-ish to $35. And you get a decent amount here. You've got 118 mils or four ounces. Um, and so I treat this just like a normal oil cleanser. I'm gonna go ahead and massage it into my skin, make sure that I'm removing all of that sunscreen, that excess oil, pulling some of that sebum to the surface. And then I'll take a towel and heat that up and use that to remove the, um, the product once I'm done, rather than just being able to rinse. So it does require a little bit of some extra steps, but I find, um, although this is my first straight up oil, uh, cleansing oil that's just an oil, I find that it does just as good of a job at cleansing the skin. Um, and it leaves my skin feeling so much more soft and kind of nourished and 
just so well prepped for the rest of my routine. Um, there's been some oil cleansers that have just gone too far and almost left my skin feeling kind of dry somehow. Um, or there's oil cleansers that just have so many, um, so many, um, you know, chemical based ingredients, um, whether that be like kind of petroleum type ingredients and that kind of thing that they almost feel too industrial in a way. Um, so this is just really nice because it really is just an oil, you know, an oil blend. You could absolutely use this as a facial oil, um, kind of as the last step of your routine or anywhere you incorporate a facial oil into your routine. You could absolutely um, use this as both a cleansing oil and as a nourishing oil. Um, I, I, I have a separate facial oil, but I could see myself in the future coming back and using this as like a double duty because it just smells fantastic. It has this lovely kind of geranium, slightly floral scent, but it's not too intense. It's very clean and um, it just leaves so much nourishment behind. Um, I could see it maybe being a little too shiny to use as a separate face oil, but um, I quite like it. The other thing I've noticed with a product like this is you don't get that slide and that slipperiness that you get from something like the Vanilla Co. Clean at Zero that I've used, um, the Aromatica um, coconut oil I think I've shown on a previous video. Um, there's not as much slip and slide because it's just the oils. So I find that I have to use a little bit more of the product per application. Um, the pumps aren't that big, it's just a little bit, a little pump, but I have to go in with at least three to five pumps in total to get that movement that I need so I don't feel like I'm dragging on my skin too much. So I give this, you know, a good 60 seconds. Um, sometimes I'll go even longer and do kind of a bit of, like a bit of a facial massage up to three minutes with this product. Um, but it just feels so nice. It feels very calming just with that aroma and the oil just feels really, really nice on the skin. Um, so, you know, I just make sure that I get everything. Um, I, like I said, I don't wear makeup, so I, I don't have to be incredibly intricate about it. I just try to make sure I get everywhere that I've applied the sunscreen and just get a, um, kind of a good massage just to work some of that surface oil, excess sebum, up and out of the skin. So now that I'm done with that, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab a towel. I'm gonna let this water heat up pretty nicely um, just to kind of get it almost, you know, kind of get like a hot steam towel basically is what this is. Um, and so we'll go ahead and do that. Hi. <laughs> um, yeah, I like I said, I made this transition to using just like an actual oil as a, as a cleansing oil. And I really do like it. I like the ritual of kind of using the hot towel and um, and just kind of taking a moment. It's a little bit more of a process, but I kind of like it. It kind of get, makes me, puts me in this kind of spa-like feel um, for a little bit um, while I'm doing my routine. It's not just like quickly burning through it. I will say there are nights where I'm like, you know, obviously tired. Like I said, work's been kind of nuts. Things have been going on. So there are nights where I'm like, I wish this would, I wish I could just slap some warm water on this and move on rather than taking the extra couple minutes for this, you know, kind of hot towel step. But I, overall, I'm happy with it. So I've got my little towel here and just apply a little bit of pressure. It's not super hot, but it's not lukewarm. It's kind of in between. It's just like a nice hot towel. And then I try not to apply too much pressure. I just kind of guide it off and it'll remove that excess oil. I can see all the the uh, zinc oxide from my sunscreen. It leaves kind of like a white um, residue on the towel. Um, it just kind of shows me that it's actually working and I'm not just slapping an oil on on top of, you know, a dirty face. So it really does help to pull some stuff to the surface of the skin. And there might be, you know, something specific about using the oils that they do use that they're just a little bit easier to lift off the skin. So you might wanna not use this as a leave-on oil. It might be a little too heavy for that. Um, as opposed to like a, something like the, um, the facial oils that I'll get to um, 
in a moment that are kind of a little bit more dry and absorb a lot nicer. This, this does kind of sit on the skin a bit. So yeah, I just do that. Um, you know, get a nice, you know, warm towel, thoroughly just kind of remove that surface of the oil that you've just applied because it's gonna, it's taking off along with it all of that sunscreen, makeup if you're a makeup wearer, uh, excess oil and sebum. And then once I get my face, I, I like I said, I don't apply too much pressure, at least I try not to. Um, and then I just, I, I shave my head and so I put sunscreen on my scalp. And so um, I don't know if I was bald in my last video. I might not have been. So this might be new to some of you guys, but yeah, I, um, I decided, you know what, I'm, tired of paying to go get haircuts and I kind of like a clean shaven head or just like kind of a, um, a buzzed head. I just use a at-home shaver now and so I like it, I got that at-home shaver and so every couple days I can just kind of go over it. Oh look at that strand from the towel. Um, I can just go over it and I don't have to worry about going and getting a haircut. Um, I um, use my face products, some of my base products on my scalp now. So I have kind of more of a canvas to work with, I suppose. Um, so I'm kind of really liking it. Who knows, I might let it grow out again sometime in the future, but I, I kind of dig it, it's not too bad. But anyway, so sunscreen goes up here now, so I just kind of wipe that clean as well um, before I hop in the shower. I don't oil cleanse my whole scalp, although hmm, maybe, maybe that's something to look into. Um, Okay, so now we're on to our uh, water cleanser. I am currently using the Make Prem uh, pH 5.5 Acid Foam. Um, so I use this with my whip maker, which I'll just grab real quick out of the shower. The little whip maker, I've, you've seen it in other videos. She's, she's uh, getting a little long in the tooth, but still works fine. Um, so I just put a, just a touch of um, warm water in there, and then this is a uh, cream style um, cleansing foam. So I just put a little, oop, a little dollop of that into the whip maker, and then I go ahead and use a little whip top to make my foam. So rather than just putting that cream, or I'll, I'll even put a gel cleanser in here, rather than just putting that right into my hands and mixing it up, I like to use this because it creates a nice, even, consistent foam. And so I'm not, and I don't end up with like chunks of soap in my hand or, you know, um, foam that's either too runny or too thick. It just kind of does the perfect amount. Um, and so yeah, it just takes that long and uh, you get this really nice, especially with this product since it's kind of a cream style cleanser, you get this really nice uh, dense foam with it, which is awesome. It just is really, really nice. I mean, that's awesome. It's hard to get that kind of a, a foam out of um, a low pH cleanser, so Make Prem did a really great job. Um, so I'm just gonna, you know, do this for... Um, about 30 to 60 seconds. I like it because it's super, super low irritant. I've even gotten it like right in my eyes before and it doesn't really burn. It's just, it's very comfortable and yet it um, does a thorough job of cleansing and leaves some natural moisture behind. So this in combination um, with that cleansing oil is just very, very gentle. If you have dry skin and you find your cleansing steps to be a little bit too much, Either of these products or these products together is just kind of one of the most gentle options that I've used. Um, I really liked the Peach and Lily um, Power Calm, their, their cleansing gel. I'd say that's a really close second to this Make Prem, but I love this product because it does a lot of the same things as far as like just kind of suit calming the skin and just m reducing redness and just kind of putting everything at a baseline, but you also get that wonderful foam. That uh, Power Calm Cleansing Gel doesn't really foam up that much at all. So this is almost like getting that awesome, dense foam from one of those old school, harsh cleansers without any of the drawbacks. So let me just rinse this real quick and then we'll keep going. So yeah, Make Prem, um, they make some really great um, products for 
um, people with sensitive skin. Um, I mean, anyone can use them, but I love their sunscreen. I've had a really positive result with their um, oil mask. Um, everything that I've used from them so far has been really, really nice. Um, and this, sorry, I, I'm drying out my whip maker. Hi. Um, <laughs> this um, cleanser was kind of a godsend because I decided because I'm going, you know, trying to use more natural products and organic if I can find it and um, minimal packaging. So something like this that comes in a plastic tube, I'm trying to move away from in my routine going forward. So I picked up a whole bunch of, I'll show you out. I at least tried to pick out some, for, um, this, it's from this brand called, um, called Pacha. I tried to pick out some that they listed on their website or I saw reviews where people are like, oh, I used it on my face because I know a lot of times with the bar soap, it's body only. So I picked out um, a um, almond and goat's milk bar soap that was um, listed on their website as being used for face. And then this one, I believe this is the um, coconut and something else. Um, maybe it's lemon and coconut milk or something like that. Um, I read a couple reviews where people were raving about this particular scent or variety um, and used it on their body and face. So I was like, you know, give it a shot. Well, um, after using it, it the um, almond, um, almond and goat milk, goat's milk, it was clearly a high pH cleanser. It completely caused um, some breakouts. My skin, my um, pores were getting really, really clogged. It was overproducing oil. It was basically like I took a step back to even before I started a full skincare routine. It was like back when I was really struggling, like in my teens. So, um, and it happened really quickly. Within like two to three weeks, my skin was in full on panic mode. I started looking and I was get. I had like these you know, really enlarged clogged pores and just some inflammation pretty much everywhere, especially in areas where I typically would never get it. So like here and then like up on my cheeks was really bad. So I knew something was wrong. I did a pH test of the, the Pacha soap. It came in at like a 9.5 to a 10 where um, your ideal um, pH level for a good cleanser would be somewhere in the 5.5. So it was far too... Um, to, uh, base basic and let it needs to be more acidic because your skin is right at a 5.5 so um, it has become my new hand soap um, I have this and I have a couple others that I picked out so and these aren't necessarily cheap bars of soap but I'm glad to have learned the lesson early on rather than have purchased you know like 10 bars of soap come to find out that I can't use any of them so lesson learned um, now I just make sure that I can either confirm just from the packaging that I have a pH balance cleanser or um, something that I can return if it turns out to be high pH after I've done a test here at home. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. Um, the next step in my routine for tonight is going to be um, one of two products that I have picked up from a brand called May Lindstrom. This is a basically kind of the luxury organic or luxury clean beauty line that I found. I, I just was searching um, luxury, um, or I wasn't searching luxury, but I was searching best clean skincare or best clean beauty lines. And a lot of times on those lists and reviews, May Lindstrom popped up um, on there as kind of like the luxe brand or that kind of high end of the high end brands. And so I was curious, the price points are obviously quite high, um, but um, I was curious because I wanted to see what that best of the best does look like, what it feels like, how it compares to, um, you know, when I started a full skincare routine, I started with Tony Moly, K-Beauty Brands, skin food, you know, things that were a dollar, five dollars for a cleanser, nine dollars for a cleanser, and you know, over time, there's still brands in my mix you know, um, that I'll, we'll talk about that still fall into that category um, of that lower price point, but are plenty effective for me. So I was curious to see, you know, what is that difference when you make that huge, that big leap up to that kind of higher level skincare? And um, so I'm using the two products that I bought were I kind of want some of the cheaper products from the line. Um, this is the Clean Dirt 
This is a, a physical exfoliation product. Um, it uses um, clay, nutmeg, cinnamon, ginger, um, clove, all of these wonderful spices and clays and um, different um, ingredients to not only draw impurities from the skin but offer like a nice physical buffing. So um, it does have those granules that can be potentially abrasive. So you do want to be have a very gentle hand with this and keep an eye on your skin. Adjust how frequently you use this based on um, what your skin can handle. If you're incredibly sensitive, then maybe just once a week is fine, once every other week. I do twice a week with this product, and then I go in once a week with the Problem Solver. This is a warming, correcting mask. It actually shares a lot of the same ingredients as the Clean Dirt, um, but it also has, um, has you know, more cocoa, some more clay, because it's an actual leave-on clay mask that draws impurities out. It has vitamin C to help brighten the skin. Um, it's supposed to reduce inflammation, calm redness, those types of things. So it's kind of a reset for the skin, whereas this is more of like a buffing physical exfoliation just to kind of smooth and retexturize. So um, I really like them both. I love these products. Um, they're both in a powder form because there's, there's no preservatives or anything in this. It's just a powder that you mix with water um, and then apply. Um, this one is obviously a mask, which I'm going to do tonight, that you paint on. And then this one is a powder that you, um, you can mix um, in a bowl, but I do it in the shower in my hand. And it creates this like really interesting kind of mousse, um, which the other product does as well. But it's this kind of mousse. It turns kind of a brown color. You kind of do a, a light scrubbing of the face for about a minute, and then you rinse. And um, I love them both. They do their jobs very well. I personally find um, the problem solver, which is the one that's a little bit more intense with the clay and that you leave on for quite some time, um, the up to 45 minutes, I do 30 minutes, I find it to be a little bit drying. It's not exactly my cup of tea. It's not the perfect clay mask for me, but for what it is as far as this incredibly natural ingredients, all of that stuff, I think it's a really solid choice, especially for those um, with oily combination skin that really like that clay to draw out excess oil and sebum. Um, even those with dry skin could probably do okay with it. You might just want to adjust how long you leave it on. And that's why I cut down to 30 minutes. So um, I'm actually going to do this one for you guys right now. Um, let me go get the tools I need. I'm going to uh, press pause on this. When we come back, we'll mix a batch and I'll apply it and we'll go from there. All right, thanks. Okay, we're back. So um, I just went and grabbed um, just a little ramekin style bowl um, from the kitchen. I've also got this um, brush that I uh, that came with a mask set, a wash off mask set that I got earlier in the year. So I just went ahead and saved the brush from it. And then I've got um, a half teaspoon measuring spoon. We're actually going to use one, I'm sorry, half a tablespoon. We're actually going to use one tablespoon of product. Um, my, my actual tablespoon is in the dishwasher and I only have one. So we've got the half. So I'm just going to take two half tablespoon scoops of this product and you can see it, it, it looks just like some spices, I guess, with some clay. So we're gonna take two half tablespoons of this product. This is so much fun. I'm like cooking on, on my skincare channel. Um, and then we're gonna mix that with <clears throat> equal parts um, water, warm water. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that going. And like I said, we're gonna do one tablespoon of water as well. Um, I've watched a video with May when she does a demo of this product. Um, at one of the um, clean beauty shops that carries it and she said just under a tablespoon so you may adjust this slightly but for me i found a one-to-one -one ratio is just fine and that's what it lists on the box so there is our little concoction here it's kind of hard to see um, but i just take the brush and i just go ahead and start mixing that um, this product has um, sodium bicarbonate in it or baking soda. So that actually helps to create this really, really nice mousse and kind of foam um, and helps to get the air incorporated. And it also works as a pH balancing ingredient um, because we've also got um, you know, vitamin C, ascorbic acid, and a couple other things in here. So that really helps to bring the pH to a really um, kind of med medium level, I suppose. <laughs> 
Um, so when you're all mixed up, you're gonna get this really, really nice, rich foam. Um, it's like quite dense, but not super solid. So um, it's not watery, like it's gonna pour out of here, but it also is, isn't is completely stiff. So I, I find the one-to-one -one ratio to be best for me. You, your mileage may vary, but you want it to be this really nice, oh, geez, it's hard to see. That really nice, it's almost kind of like a moussey mud. It's got a, a bounce to it. Um, it's kind of hard to see on camera, but um, but yeah, it has it has some air, it has bubbles incorporated into it. It's not solid, but it's not completely fluid either. Um, so once you've got that, then you're just gonna wanna go ahead and paint. Let me, is this off a little bit? We'll see. Um, <laughs> You're just gonna go ahead and apply this. I'm not gonna look right in the camera. I've gotta kind of look at the mirror while I do this. So my apologies. Um, but yeah, you don't want it, you know, when you're when you're putting on a layer, it shouldn't be like that where you can completely see through it. You should get a nice coat on, on the skin. Oh, this is hard. Um, but yeah, I, I've also been looking for a clean beauty and skincare products that I can find locally at stores so I'm not contributing to like packaging, like shipping waste. I mean, they're already using a lot of packaging getting it to the store, so I might as well go to the store, you know, if it's relatively, you know, close proximity to grab it rather than having a whole separate box sent to myself. That's kind of my little philosophy and so I was lucky enough to find three stores in the Denver area that carry May Lindstrom skincare so that was another reason why it ended up being the one that I went to um, but I just liked the whole brand um, you know message it's all about using really um, high quality and well sourced ingredients so it's not all about like oh it has you know raw cacao or nutmeg in it that's just any old you know product that anyone could source um, may does take a lot of time finding the highest quality ingredients in small batches so you know you're getting something that's incredibly fresh and um, at its peak as far as the performance goes for the skin so um, her expiration dates are you know pretty quick and even even her stores um, even the stores that carry it, carry it in really small batches. You're not going to go into a store and find 20 or 30, you know, problem solver clay masks on the shelf. You're going to find two, maybe three at the most if it's a popular seller. So um, it's one of those products that can be kind of hard to come by sometimes depending on how popular it is in your area. But luckily I've had three stores to choose from. So between the three... I can uh, kind of get what I need. Um, they have a, she has an amazing looking um, balm serum slash moisturizer called the Blue Cocoon that has blue tansy oil and it just looks incredible. I got a sample and it smells like a dream. So that might be something you see on an upcoming video. It's just a little pricey. Like I said, I'll list all the prices below. But this clay mask comes in at a hundred dollars yoinkers so um, yeah it's definitely an investment but I think for the um, quality of the product and then also just like just understanding the time and attention that's been put into making something truly effective um, as well as very clean um, I think there is quite a bit of value in that this isn't you know an Aztec clay mask that's gonna dry the crap out of your face and you know it's there's more to it than that and there's more thought and more intention behind it um and so i think there's some real value there um there's plenty of mask i have a giant face but there is plenty of mask um just with one tablespoon to bring it down to the neck some people um like bringing it down all the way to their chest um because you know if you have um, you know any redness any issues there um, so yeah it, it's a really really interesting mask 
It feels great. It smells incredible. Those ingredients, like I said, the raw cacao, the um, nutmeg, clove, um, there, I think there's cinnamon here. Um, I think there's ginger here as well. It just has this incredibly warm and relaxing quality to it while still having that physical warmth from those ingredients is very revitalizing and energizing. So it's this odd combination that makes it feel very spa-like. Um, it's like a cross between like a fresh baked cookie, like a, a ginger snap or a gingerbread cookie and kind of like a Mexican hot chocolate that has that spice to it as well. So it's really awesome. I could go on and on. I just love what May's doing with her products. Um, and I look forward to continuing the um, to try some of them as I can afford um, and sharing them with you guys. Um, so like I said, this is gonna stay on for um, about 30 minutes. You can go longer, you can go shorter. Um, and then I'm gonna come back to you guys once it's um, dried up to my liking and um, show you what it looks like when it's dried to my liking. And then I'll um, hop in the shower to rinse it off and we'll go from there. All right, great, thanks. All right guys, so we just hit the 30 minute mark with the May Lindstrom, the Problem Solver Clay Mask. Um, as you can see, this is one of those masks that dries a little stiff, makes it a little bit more difficult to talk, so that's why I don't have a lot of expression right now, but um, I went a little heavy on the cheeks um, and apparently under here on the chin. It's dry in the sense that I'm not getting any residue, but it's not completely dry, um, which is totally fine. I don't think that this type of mask or clay masks in general have to be completely 100% stiff to do their purifying and clarifying and drawing things to the surface um, um, magic. I think it's that process as it dries that does it, so it doesn't have to be 100% dry and it happens at that moment. It's something that happens as it dries, so even if you go a little bit thick and you've still got um, some damp or slightly wet patches, that's not going to be the end of the world. Um, I just do it until I feel comfortable. I, I actually don't like uh, a mask that gets completely stiff and hard and solid, and this has some movement. It's going to crack, but it's not that like completely frozen cast that's almost painfully tight. This is still comfortable. It's tight, but it's comfortable. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and rinse this. It Because it's this really dark, almost black clay, um, I don't rinse this in the sink. It's just a little messy, to be honest. So I'm actually, at this point, gonna hop in the shower, do my whole shower thing, and then uh, kind of just place my face under that warm water and just let that wash off. The granules in this mask provide a little bit of physical exfoliation, so I do a very mild just wiping of the face as it rinses just to do a very light, mild physical exfoliation as it's coming off. So um, you can see it's it's cracking, so I'm a little bit more comfortable to talk now. Um, so let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and rinse this off, um, do the shower uh, routine, come back, and then we'll move through the rest of my evening routine. So um, please hold. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, back, freshly showered. Let me close this. Um, freshly showered. Um, so, oh, that is, I have this like scrubby, it's like a long scrubby kind of mesh thing that I use to like get my back and do some nice scrubbing. Apparently I didn't rinse it off properly, so now it's dripping and leaving that, so that's super attractive. Um, we're gonna do this instead, cause that's less weird. How's that? Just for the towel. And then the towel has drips. You know what? We're not gonna win today, so <laughs> um, I'm just gonna move on. Um, so, um, water, oil cleanse, water cleanse, did that May Lindstrom mask which left my skin feeling incredibly soft. Um, like I said, I find after, and it brightens my skin, it evens skin tone. It does a lot of things really, really well. Personally, I find it to be just a tad too drying. So um, that's why I like to go right into my hydrating products after using that mask, just to kind of keep any of that potential dryness at bay. Um, so before I do that, I wanted to talk about what I would use um, alternately to the May Lindstrom, um, the problem solver mask. 
Um, that has ascorbic acid in it. It's got a vitamin C product. Um, I have a vitamin C elsewhere in my routine, which we'll talk about, but as far as acids like an AHA, BHA, or retinol, I tend to not do those, um, layer them, or use them on the same night. So although I'm not going to use these products, I still wanted to show you because they're part of my night routine. This is the Little Barn Apothecary Passion Fruit Plus Rose Enzymatic Exfoliating Exfoliant Mask. This uses pineapple enzyme, passion fruit enzyme, and some other um, other fruit enzymes as the natural AHA to do some exfoliation. So this doesn't have any added glycolic acid, but it still gives you that nice resurfacing that an AHA um, chemical exfoliation mask would do. It's just in a gentler format. Um, still effective. Um, I've only used it a couple of times thus far. It's this really thin, watery um, mask that I just brush on, and you get that same tingle, that same little sting that you would get from like a uh, stronger AHA product. So it's still just as, a, as effective, but it uses natural ingredients. So it's really, really nice. Um, it smells wonderful. It has this like citrus plus rose kind of scent, which is really great. Um, and a little bit goes a long way. I've used it, I think, three times, and I've barely made a dent because it just is a nice, thin layer that you leave on for about 10 to 15 minutes. So that's my current AHA chemical exfoliation step, so I use that twice a week. And then we've got, or once to twice a week, I just keep an eye on it. Then I've got the Ordinary's Grand Active um, Retinol, Retinoid 2% Emulsion. I've had this forever. Um, I This is my second retinol product after Differin that I used for about a month. Um, I like it. It just helps to um, reduce pore size, just kind of give you a nice even texture. It just kind of knocks down any texture issues and just makes my skin feel a little bit more resilient over time too. I think I'm about month four into that, month three or four into using that. Still have plenty to get through. Um, so I use that twice a week. Um, so basically I do like Monday, Wednesday, AHA, Tuesday, Thursday, BHA, Wednesday, Friday, um, retinol, and then uh, Sunday or Saturday, I'll do that male instrument mask, and then I have a free day with no acids on my face. And of course, that's all dependent on how my skin's feeling. If I'm feeling any sort of irritation or I have a breakout, which rarely happens, but if it does, then, you know, I press pause on that. So that's not a be-all, end-all, have to use something six days a week. That's just kind of where those acids fit into my week, should I decide to use them. Um, you might notice I didn't mention an a, a BHA, that's because I just gave the rest of my The Ordinary Salicylic Acid 2% solution to my roommate because she was having some um, blackheads and some breakouts that she she doesn't use any acid products at this time. So it's like, tr start with salicylic acid, start slow, um, and in incorporate it into your routine. Um, and then, you know, if that's still not working or if you need a little bit more, then we'll talk about maybe some stronger AHA. But I thought that was a good starting point for her. Um, going forward, I'll probably pick up another bottle of that so I can get through my um, AHA mask that I have here. But once that mask is done, I honestly would rather have AHA and BHA together in one product so I can use them twice a week just that those two uh, you know those two days a week and that would free up two more days of my week to do maybe some more hydrating or just nothing at all just keep it simple um haven't started using it yet it's a mad hippie exfoliating serum it's got 16 acts uh, um, actives with alpha hydroxy acids apple stem cells um, so it's got the natural versions of bha plus aha and some other um, active ingredients in it so this would go for AHA and BHA. Haven't started it yet. The rest of these are all um, repurchases. So that's the Peach and Lily Super Boot Resurfacing Mask. AHA, BHA, Blue Agave. Excellent AHA and BHA mask. Very gentle yet effective. Similarly, we have the Peach and Lily, the Good Acids um, Pore Toner. AHA, a little bit of BHA as well. Turmeric, um, very hydrating yet exfoliating. And then last but not least, the um, Moon Juice Beauty Shroom Exfoliating Acid Potion. This is a 25% acid complex with AHA and BHA. It's very, very potent, but still not too extreme. Um, I think out of all of these, not including the Mad Hippie, which I've yet to try, I think I like this one just because it's the most potent. So I think this will probably be my forever exfoliating toner. Um, and yeah, so that's it. That's uh, what I've got going on for that. I'm just going to set these over here. We'll just keep rocking it all in. Um, so 
Since I'm not going to be doing an acid step necessarily, um, I want to go right into my toner. And the toner that I'm using right now, let's, let's just, there we go, hi. <laughs> the toner that I'm using right now is um, the Botanic Farms Avocado Honey Rich Toner. I picked this up off of Soko Glam. I think it's in the $20 to $25 range. It's a really nice um, toner that has um, avocado oil, avocado extract. It's got honey, propolis, um, some really, really nice humectant and hydrating ingredients. And it's a little bit um, emollient too. So it's got some nourishment. It's kind of like, it's hard to see, but it's kind of a um, slightly milky um, toner. It's a little bit thicker than something incredibly watery. Um, like, oh, I don't know, like your typical watery toner. This feels a little bit more like the Claire's Supple Preparation Toner in the sense that it has a little weight to it. Um, really, really nice kind of clean slash floral scent. It almost reminds me of like, just like a classic sheet mask scent, but in the form of a toner. Um, it absorbs really, really well and it just leaves, it doesn't leave an oiliness behind, but it just leaves a little bit of weight that a typical watery toner wouldn't. I tried putting this in a spray bottle to mist it on, but it was just too thick and it's just like, <laughs> so it's definitely something you gotta put on with the hands. I typically do three to four layers of this, just a couple drops, pat it in, a couple drops, pat it in, and so on and so forth. Um, until my skin feels sufficiently hydrated, especially after using that May Lindstrom mask, my skin usually just needs a little bit of something. So um, I honestly probably won't be coming back to that mask. I'm gonna be looking for a clay mask that stays pretty damp throughout the entire application process and leaves behind some hydration as opposed to kind of sucking it all dry, I guess. I, I, don't, I don't mean that in a bad way. I really do like that product, but I'm just being honest. So that's it for the Avocado Honey Rich Toner. Really like it so far. Leaves plenty of hydration and it has almost a residue, almost like an emulsion or a light serum than like a watery toner that leaves you super dewy and bouncy. This has some more weight to it. So this might be good for those with drier skin throughout the year, those with combination oily, you might like this in the winter time or whatever season is driest um, in your area. So moving on to an essence, this is the Blythe Vital Treatment Nine Essential Seeds Essence. This focuses on brightening. Um, you've got niacinamide and a whole plethora of different seeds that are supposed to help with brightening. Um, I used the Eight Nourishing Beans Essence from Blythe that was kind of thick and heavy and focuses on hydration and nourishment. And that was like, honestly, the best essence I've ever used. And so I have the rest, they have this eight nourishing beans and then there's another one. Jeez, I can't even remember what it is. It's like seeds? Wait, this is seeds. So you've got eight nourishing beans, nine essential seeds, and what's the last one? Um, oh five energy roots. Ooh, so <laughs> you've got roots, seeds, and beans. But this one, you can tell, it immediately gives you this nice glowy kind of dewy effect. I just, that was my second layer. I'm going to go in with three layers of this, just a couple drops in the hand. It's much more watery than the beans version. It has this really wonderful kind of citrus scent to it. Um, and I find it to be incredibly hydrating, and it really does not only offer that immediate glow and that immediate brightness, but that seems to last and it kind of builds. So this is a product that as you use it, the results just seem to get better and better. Um, Blythe, their essences are really amazing. They used to sell it on Glow Recipe, not anymore, um, but you can find it on Yes Style um, and a couple other sites. Um, I'm kind of moving away from doing both a toner and an essence just because less packaging, less waste. And so um, I'm just going to probably identify which, you know, if I can find a, the ultimate toner for me or the ultimate essence for me and then just use that as both. I think ideally I would prefer something that comes in a really big container um, that's, um, that's fairly watery that I can just layer and layer and layer till I feel comfortable. So I probably... Even though I like this and would absolutely recommend it, this wouldn't be my forever toner. It's a little too heavy. Couldn't use it year round. And the same with this essence, even though it is brightening, it's not um, my absolute favorite. I would prefer something nourishing over brightening because I can get that from other steps in my routine. So 
Um, I'll probably end up with um, like one of those super watery toners that comes in like a 300 mil thing that I can just get a lot of use out of facial mist, take it here or there, um, use it however I wish. So these are great, but not perfect for me. Um, so yeah, that's it um, for toner essence. We're just going to talk about some uh, the two serums that I'm using. Um, I have been using these either both or alternating them. Um, this is the Youth to the People Kale um, Pus Tripeptide 5 um, Vitamin C Hyaluronic Acid Superfood Firm and Brighten Serum. Um, I don't like this. I'm just going to come right to it. Um, it absorbs incredibly fast. Um, to the point that if I um, apply it to my fingers and spot it on, I can't even really get it spread out before it just absorbs into those specific areas that I applied it. It just doesn't spread nicely. Um, so I have to mix it with a lotion or another serum to get it to actually apply evenly. Um, and I guess I should have, you know, I bought it because I did a full brand review of Youth to the People, and I feel bad because this is kind of one of the last products in my routine from them. I love that brand. I adore their moisturizers, their adaptogen, adaptogen deep moisturizer, their moisture whip um, moisturizer, their incredible hydrators, the moisture, um, the adaptogen deep, I named my absolute favorite hydrator of all of 2019. Um, their facial mist is absolutely incredible. That's the Adaptogen um, Hydrating Mist. Incredible product. Their cleanser knocked it out of the park. That's such a good value for that cleanser. It's um, absolutely amazing considering the size that you get. Um, so I I named it my one of my top brands of the entire year. An incredible brand. Incredible um, brand ethos. Everything they stand for. A, a lot of good that they do in their community is just absolutely amazing. This is just the, one of the, it, it's the straggler be, because I don't like it. Um, it does hydrate. It gives a little boost of hydration and a little bit of brightening through that vitamin C that's in here, um, but not much else. It has quite a bit of lactic acid in it, which is a mild or more gentler form of AHA. Um, so I don't consider it to be over exfoliating if I use that on top of a, a different vitamin C or on top of an AHA or retinol or BHA, but I could absolutely see how it could be too much for some people. And it's not quite enough to stand alone as an exfoliation step, but it's potentially just enough to, pr pr um, to create a problem for a lot of people. So I don't necessarily have an issue with it, but I don't like the fact that I have to be concerned about incorporating this properly into my routine. I want my serum to focus on, you know, brightening with some niacinamide or hydration or nourishment. I don't need it to do any exfoliation. That's just, that's a personal opinion. So it was my least favorite out of the brand and it's the most expensive. At, at this point, I mean, I've had this thing for, you know, probably a little over two months now, maybe even more. And the fact that I've only gotten that far in it means that I'm probably skipping quite a few days now. I don't use it as much as I, I did when I was reviewing it. And I'm ready to pack it up and either give it away. But it's like it was the most expensive product out of the brand. I think it was like 60 something dollars. So I'm like, Ugh, like, just be done already, please. So um, I'm using this serum. And then my serum that I'm loving, that um, that's the one that I look forward to using every day, is actually just a handwritten label that says anti-aging. This is an anti-aging facial oil serum from a local zero waste shop or a local um, kind of um, a sustainable package store. So you go in, you purchase a little bottle, they, they have a bigger container of this stuff, and then they fill it up and you pay by the ounce. This was $6 an ounce. That's a very affordable for a serum. And it doesn't have anything that would perish quickly. You've got meadow foam oil, jojoba. I think they put a little sandalwood essential oil in there for fragrance. And then some vitamin E. I think there might be one or two more um, carrier oils in here. But it's just a lovely facial oil. It does have that sandalwood scent, which I do like, but I understand that there are sensitivities around that. And then that vitamin E helps as an anti-aging and nourishing ingredient. So it just goes on like a dream. It spreads really, really nicely. In fact, um, I'm not going to use this tonight. Sorry, sorry to the people. We're not going to use that tonight. Let's use this oil. And I have another facial oil that I'm going to talk to you about because 
I'm just this I'm still considering a serum even though it really is just a facial oil with a couple extra things but I wanted to talk about if you're looking for just a straight up facial oil that you can buy in stores um, I've got an option for you if you do have a zero waste store or um, maybe like a beauty market where you where people are kind of creating some stuff you just want to be wary of like um, a lot of water-based products because those you know, there's potential for bacteria growth there if they're not using the proper preservatives and the proper amounts. I'd say the most majority of the time, I would lean more towards um, finding something that a lab's actually created and it's been tested. But when you're talking about facial oils and stuff that, you know, isn't, isn't going to churn in the way that you're not going to see a lot of mold growth, that type of thing, um, I'm a little bit more easygoing. I still play it I still try to be conscious. I bought this and then immediately incorporated it into my routine because I didn't want it sitting on my shelf for a year waiting to be used. Um, so that's just something you want to be cognizant of is, okay, this is a fresh product or something that's, you know, doesn't have added preservatives. Um, it needs to, it needs to be used as quickly as possible. So you just want to be smart about it. You know, if it smells off, if it looks off, if you if you're feeling uncomfortable about using a product for whatever reason, give the store a call. Take it back to the store, have a conversation with them. And stores that are good and stand by the quality of their products will take that back from you and give you a fresh one. So that's that oil. It gives you that really nice kind of oily glow. It smells incredible. It feels so soft. Um, it absorbs fairly well. Um, I wish it absorbed a little bit better, but considering what it is, it's great. It's been really, really combating my excess, excess oil and sebum production, really balancing things overnight and just giving me kind of a brighter, more dewy look overall. I, I love that serum. Super, super simple. Something that honestly you could probably make at home, but I don't trust myself. <laughs> I guess I'm trusting some people that are just doing it technically at home. But anyway, whatever. I I like that product and I will continue to come back to it. $6 an ounce. An ounce. That's nothing for a serum. So that's that. <laughs> um, um, next up is my eye cream, or I guess I should say eye essence. This is the Eco Your Skin Volufilene 15 Eye Essence. This is a really big 50 mil eye product. Usually you're see, you will see 15 is usually the average. It is pricey. This comes in at $70, but considering the size, this is going to last me forever. It's kind of a jelly style serum that um, smooths on incredibly well. This does have quite a bit of silicone in it, but it has this incredible slide and glide. You, you don't get any tug or any resistance from the skin or um, underneath the eye area, and it absorbs really really well and so i use this um at my nighttime routine i found that it really does help to keep dark circles at bay it helps to um, give my skin a more awake and refreshed look um, when i wake up um this product i found it's hard i i used to do this really intricate dot 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 um, in fact, I'm using the wrong finger to spread it. I was a little lazy there, but I used to do this really intricate dot, 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 which I, I mean, I guess I can do with this, but because it's less of a cream and more of an essence, I found that it was a little bit harder to do that really intricate, like 15 dot method. I just kind of spread it around. Um, but yeah, it works really, really well. It's just kind of waking up the eye area in the morning, keeping dark circles at bay. I, I don't have a lot of fine lines, crow's feet, wrinkles in my eye area, but I just feel like this still plumps and hydrates that area. Um, I tried using it on these forehead wrinkles here. Didn't quite work very well. I used it for about a month there. Didn't really do much, so I've just been keeping it on the eye area, and it's probably one of the first eye creams or eye serums, eye products, um, outside of the Wamisa by Glow Recipe Chai Tea eye cream that's now discontinued that I think really worked for my skin. So um, I will absolutely 
I have some other ones in my stash. I've got a few more to test out, but um, once those are all done, and if they don't wow me like this one does, then that'll probably be the one I come back to if I decide to continue using an eye product. I feel like it's kind of an add-on in a skincare routine, to be honest, unless you're really trying to battle some specific issues. For me, it's more prevention, and I think I can get away with using something else in my routine as long as it's safe for the eye area. So, um, all right, we're almost done. Um, I've got my um, night cream, which I, I used to do a moisturizer plus a night cream, but I've, I've been trying to really kind of scale that back and see how my skin reacts to just using one or the other, and I'm doing okay. And so right now I'm using the Peach and Lily Overnight Star Sleeping Mask. Um, this is a relatively new product for me. Um, I just finished using that Youth to the People um, Dream Mask, which is incredible. Um, I really wish I that I would have that video would have saved because I raved about everything about Youth to the People for the most part. The only two products that I was kind of iffy on were this serum that we just talked about and their kombucha toner. It's a little too sticky for me, but everything else was A plus knocked it out of the park. So I feel so bad because that serum I just trashed and I'm like, but don't get the wrong idea about Youth to the People. It's great. Um, but yeah, this. Um, Peach and Lily Dream Mask has this beautiful blue color that is um, a natural blue color. I believe it's got um, acai berry um, and black ginseng. And so this is just, um, it's kind of um, almost like a custard kind of consistency to it. That's quite a lot that I just put on my hand, but I'm gonna do my scalp too. So that, that's my excuse. Um, I'm gonna save, I guess. Yeah, whatever we'll just go all over my head um so yeah it has this wonderful blue color to it so far i found it to be incredibly nourishing very hydrating it locks in all of that hydration from the toners the essences all of that stuff just really gets sealed in with this um and so i just apply it to um about half that much if you're just doing your face like a pea size but i did double that amount and then um, i just kind of pat it on so I get it almost kind of emulsified so it kind of becomes more of an oil and then I get my head too because I don't so we're just doing the whole thing <laughs> um it smells really really light a uh, very lightly floral a little bit citrus there's no added fragrance here no artificial dyes no silicones it's a very clean product peach and lily is so awesome about that and it just, it has a little bit of, you know, an uh, oil to itself, but it also has a lot of antioxidants and um, natural hydrating ingredients, soothing qualities as well. And so it just goes on like a dream. It feels really nice. I think I prefer the end result of the Youth to the People Dream Mask. This almost feels slightly too heavy for me, slightly too oily for me, which I didn't think was a thing, but yeah, it's... It, there's something there that I'm not 100% sold on. It's still great, but it's um, th that dream mask was a dream. So <laughs> that's why like this is this is awesome. And actually you get um, more per uh, you get a larger size um, for a lesser price than the Youth to the People product. But I'd still think the Youth to the People one is my favorite. Um, finally is the last little bit of my Youth to the People Maki plus Acai Prickly Pear Goji um, Superfood Super Berry Hydrate and Glow Oil. This oil is incredible. It's what sold me on what makes facial oils great. Um, it has a lot of um, really great oils in it, including um, I think there's jojoba in here, squalane. Then you've also got the goji, the acai, the prickly pear, the maki, which is like one of the most antioxidant dense and vitamin C dense um, fruits um, or berries. So there's just tons of antioxidants in here, a lot of vitamin C. I love using that as, this at night. I wake up with like incredibly bright skin, um, super, super dewy look. Um, it helps to even skin tone, regulate oil production. It just, it, it takes facial oil and then just heightens it. It's incredible. And it's also kind of dry in a sense, so it's not gonna sit on the skin. It's gonna absorb really, really well while still locking things in. So even people with oily skin, I think that you should try, just give this one a shot because I started off with oily skin I hated 
that oily, slick feeling, anything. I was looking for oil-free everything. Everything I used oil-free, oil-free. Once I made that transition to using more emollient, nourishing, oil-based products, my skin just improved so much because it wasn't having to do all the work. You know, some of those products were stepping in to help out. And this is one that took it even further by giving me that nourishment but not feeling too oily, which was awesome. So I'm only gonna use a couple drops of this because that um, that serum, that anti-aging serum that I used from the Zero Waste store, that's usually my day serum, and then this would be my night, but I wanted to show you that one because I, I don't like the Youth to the People one, so I wanted to show you something that I liked that I could use at night. Um, so this one, I'm just gonna do a couple drops and then I'll do the rest on my scalp because I always do a facial oil up here. Once again, I get dry and flaky and a facial oil really helps to keep that at bay. So I'm just gonna show you guys, I'll just do the cheeks because that's a little too much oil. I wouldn't suggest doing both of those serums together or the serum and this, but it has this wonderful kind of berry scent. It's very, very nice and it just gives you this really, really nice glow. Um, I know I'm already glowed up to the max tonight. <laughs> But um, by itself, I really, really like it. It spreads so evenly, absorbs really nicely. This isn't something that's gonna end up on your pillow at night. It just goes in really, really nicely. Um, it's it's great, it's, it's the best facial oil I've used. And so then I usually take about four to six drops and um, go right there. And you know, this doesn't apply to a lot of you, but I just go right into my scalp because this absorbs so nicely, it hasn't, Felt like it's clogged any pores. I've been using it up here for a couple weeks now. It doesn't feel like it clogs any pores. I use just a really little bit to get my whole scalp and it just help, helps to keep the dryness and flakiness at bay. And uh, between using a night cream and the facial oil at night and then using the sunscreen, um, I have a really nice oil, natural oil based kind of sunscreen that I use during the day. Um, my scalp has been so soft and so buttery and so smooth and no razor burn. It's been awesome. So um, it's a little bit of an intense scalp care routine, but it is what it is. So yeah, that is my night routine. We are all done. Um, I hope that you found some interesting information here. Like I said, um, this will get posted along with links to all of these products, along with price points. Um, and if you have any questions or you have recommendations on maybe some alternatives to what you've seen here, please let me know. Um, any, like I said, any additional questions, I'm happy to elaborate more um, in, the, in the comments section to talk about these products more in depth. Um, a lot of them I've already put up full reviews on my blog, that's ajkbeauty.wordpress. You'll find the link below. So you'll find full reviews of the Youth to the People products we talked about, um, the eye um, essence, the retinol, the um, salicylic acid from the ordinaries there. Um, so you'll find quite a bit um, of reviews already. Some of this stuff is still um, fairly new in the sense that I haven't put together a full review, so you got a little bit of a sneak peek. Um, if you want shorter versions of these, uh, those full reviews, take a look at my Instagram, at AJKBeauty. You're gonna find kind of condensed versions, some links to some, um, to um, some other reviews, other content. Um, I've got a Facebook group as well, which I'll link um, that, that is all focused on clean beauty and sustainable packaging. So if you're interested in this idea of natural skincare, clean beauty, glass packaging that can be reused, easily recycled, um, zero waste, refillable products, DIY stuff, anything that falls outside of the realm of traditional skincare um, and focuses more kind of on a, um, uh, environmentally conscious approach and maybe something that's a little bit better for your skin, then check that Facebook group out, um, Sustainably Beautiful, and I will put the link to that group down below. So that's all I have for you guys tonight. Super long video, but that's how I roll apparently. And thank you so much for watching and stay glowing. Bye.